All right, we're back. This is going to be page one of notes 14, and we're going to talk about logistic differential equations. So hopefully you just watched the previous video. Um, it kind of has a, a little simulation thing that we can do um, and generate data that gives us this logistic growth. Um, and it's, it's very cool. I enjoy that activity. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, so in case that didn't work out well for you or whatever, here's some other data that we can use. And so what I'm going to do pretty quickly is I'm going to put this in my calculator so we can just kind of like look at it. So uh, I'm going to switch over to the calculator, and then uh, I'm going to make a scatter plot. So what I'm going to do is list and spreadsheet. So probably the most underutilized thing on the calculator, I would guess, um, is list and spreadsheets. So I need, uh, let's say, time is, so I'm up here next to A. I'm just typing time. And here I'm going to type infected. All right. And then I need to fill in the numbers 1 to 11. And the fast way to do that, I'm going to type equal, and then SEQ, T comma, T comma one to 11. So that's gonna fill in a sequence of numbers from one to 11. And so that's just so I didn't have to type them. And then one, two, I'm just typing what's in the notes, four, eight, 13, 22, 26, 28, 29, 29, and 30. All right, so this is our data. And what we wanna do now is make a scatter plot. And I wanna do it on the function, uh, like the graph page. So I'm gonna insert a graphing page, doc four, graph. I need to change this to scatter plot. So menu three, and then option six is scatter plot. So I'm just going to type six. And now I need to get those lists. So if I press the var key, they're just there, right? So I want the x coordinate is always going to be the uh, time. And then the y coordinate is going to be the number of people infected. So we'll press enter. And then we can set the window because we pretty much know what's happening, right? So menu four, one, I'm gonna go like negative one to 12 because I know I need to go one to 11 so I can definitely see everything if I do that. And I'm gonna go like negative five to 35 because the data starts at one and goes up to 30. So this should give us a pretty good picture. And uh, yeah, you can see this is, this is pretty good. Calculator can do uh, logistic regression. So uh, do I 100% understand that? No, I don't, I don't exactly know what the calculator is doing when it does it. Um, but I do know that it's going to look at this data and spit out the logistic curve that best fits it. So go to uh, menu, option four, option four, nope, option four, option one, stack calculations. And then uh, we want uh, D to equal zero. So we're going to use option uh, D here. You can use option E. I don't, I don't really know. I, I assume it's some difference in uh, the, the work that it does. And it, it spits out a different equation. Um, but we actually want the one where D is equal to zero, I think. So here, uh, I need to pick uh, the X list is going to be time. So I just press to the right to get all the available lists. Uh, so I want time. And then I'm going to hit tab, press to the right again, and choose infected. And just press enter. So it's going to, the key thing is it's going to put our equation in F1. And that's what we want. So I'm going to press OK. And you can see it like spits it out. It tells you what the function looks like. So here's, um, so the function that it's generating looks like C over one plus A E to the negative B X. That's what it's dealing with. And then it tells you what A, B and C are. And then it gives you your residuals, which is like how wrong, how different a data point is from the curves point. Um, but we don't really need to talk about that here. If you're in AP stat uh, or any statistics, uh, you've probably talked about that or looked at it. So menu. I need to change back to function mode. So three, back to function, and then press up to get my function. And you can see it's already there. And thank God, because we don't want to type that. And press enter, fits it really nicely. Okay, so look at the curve and just kind of like take it in, right? So we've got uh, increasing concave up, and then we have increasing concave down. Where does it look like that change is happening? Well, to me, it kind of looks like it's about halfway, right? It looks like it appears as if um, halfway through the population, which would be kind of the limit as you go to infinity, halfway through the limit as you go to infinity, it looks like you change from concave up to concave down. Uh, if you go to negative infinity, it looks like you approach zero. But I don't know how, re how like, relevant it is to talk about that because usually time marches forward. And usually this is from like one initial point. But that's OK. Um, so since this thing is always increasing, the derivative of this thing should always be positive. Um, and then we have like this changing concavity. I'm kind of answering the questions uh, that are in the notes. 
I'm gonna go back to the notes now and just uh, take a look at them and see what we can say about this S-shaped logistic curve. Um, so let's see. So what do I think will happen if we take the limit as x bar to positive and negative infinity? So uh, I think that the limit as x approaches positive infinity of let's call it y, right? I think that's going to be uh, the the total population. Like I, it looks like it looks like everybody eventually is going to get this thing. Um, and if you think about the activity that we did in the previous video, like, yeah, eventually everyone will, like it, it I guess theoretically could take an infinite number of rounds, but like, I think eventually everybody's getting it. If you go to negative infinity, uh, it, it looks like, looks like it goes to zero. You don't really get asked that question. So let's say equals zero with like a question mark. Cause I mean, if you think about it as like an infection, like, I mean, I guess if it, if there never was an infection, then suddenly there was, then like, yeah, it was zero like forever. Um, the curve itself, I'm just going to sketch a little bit just so we know what we're talking about. This is going to test my artistic ability though. I can, I can feel it already. So it's kind of like, uh, this, that's not terrible. Um, so I'm going to say that the, the derivative of this function should be always positive. So like, let's say dy dx, because I'm using x, uh, is greater than zero because y is increasing. But initially, and we saw this when we did the activity, initially it's kind of growing exponentially and then it kind of tapers off, right? So I think what we can say is that uh, it starts off increasing concave up and changes to increasing concave down. So that seems to be what has happened there. And we, we think, I think, that it seems like it happens at like, if this is L, it looks to me like at L over two is about where that happens. And we're gonna find out that that actually is mathematically where that's gonna happen. Uh, but this is, this is kind of an introduction to this. I'm going to stop this video here and then uh, I'm going to derive the solution to this differential equation uh, in the next video. And uh, yeah. All right. So I'll be back and we will do that. So I will see you there.